you thought Big Blue Nation threw away their t-shirts after last season, think again. Could the 40 and OTs have been made just one season too early? Hello, everyone. Shay Pepler and Jordan Cornette here inside our Campus Insider Studios. And joining us from Lexington, Kentucky is our Kentucky Insider, Dick Gabriel. And Dick, a lot of people high on this year's Kentucky squad. Coach Cal returns a lot of talent. But can you give us one bold statement about this year's team? Here's about as bold as it gets. I think that potentially this roster could be as talented and deep, maybe even deeper, than the 1996 National Championship team coached by Rick Pitino. And that ball club had nine guys who wound up in one way, shape, or form in the NBA. This team has maybe as many as 10 if it all works out for them. There's a lot of talent, as you said, on this roster. Now, Dick, when you first made that statement when we spoke earlier today, I was like, has Dick been on the bottle? Has he been drinking this morning? That's a bold statement. But then when I think about it, I actually agree with you. And the reason why is because similar to that Patino National Championship team, they had depth at the front line. You know, you think about guys on that team, Antoine Walker, Walter McCarty. Those guys were great, but they also had depth. Mark Pope coming off the bench. Nazi Mohammed coming off the bench. A lot of bigs. Well, I think this Kentucky team you talk about right now is the best front line that I've seen in my 31 years of life. It's because of that depth. You look at it, you got Willie Cauley-Stein. Dakari Johnson returns, improved throughout the entire season. Carl Towns, Marcus Lee, and Trey Lyles. Five guys that could very well end up playing at the next level starting for an NBA basketball team. That's how good these guys are. They'll be able to beat you up with that physicality. They'll be able to wear you down through the rigors of a 40-minute basketball game. That's what makes this Kentucky team so special. A brutal front line. can't believe you just revealed your age. I'm shocked, actually. Okay, both giving <laughs> rave reviews, but Dick, any potential weaknesses for this squad? Yeah, I think outside shooting. Uh, they've got to find a perimeter scorer who is consistent with the jump shot. I'm not talking about just three-pointers like Aaron Harrison kept bearing during the NCAA tournament. I'm talking just a consistent jump shooter from the outside. Harrison was deadly during the tournament, but he wasn't that consistent during the year. Everyone's going to pack it in on Kentucky until the Wildcats make them or until the Wildcats prove that they can make those outside shots. I don't see anybody on that roster yet. Maybe it's Devin Booker. Maybe it's Aaron Harrison. We're going to have to find out. Yeah, I think the no-go-to guy with Julius Randle being gone, who does that become? And I think it does potentially become Devin Booker. I think this guy at the three spot has a lot of skills. A lot of ball skills can get to the rim, create his own shot, create that space, deadly from distance. I think he has that swagger to step right in and assume a leadership role as being that guy that they go to. Now, if he can adjust early on, he becomes that starting three. Right now, with the embarrassment of riches in the front line. Alex Poitras may get the nod to start at three, but eventually I think that becomes Devin Booker's position. And when you talk about Kentucky this year, it's all a matter of how soon does it take these freshmen to adjust. If they become ready to play at the start of the season, Kentucky can start the season number one and go wire to wire, potentially winning the national championship. But it all lies on freshmen. That's always a scary situation. Yeah, we'll see how long those 40 and 0 t-shirts last. Dick Gabriel and Jordan Cornette, thanks so much for the time. My pleasure. Well, the ACC Big Ten Challenge matchups have been announced. We okay. break down the best and worst right here on CampusInsiders.com.